heads of global experience in training and education. She heads learning programs and service delivery at Clay. While bringing the brains behind Clay's learning architecture, she is also a mom to a little cute toddler. She is an avid traveler and is creating similar experiences with her daughter too. Even with her busy schedule, Arshleen is passionate about creating unforgettable travel experiences with her family that are both fun and stress-free. We are excited to have her here with us today to share her knowledge and expertise with all of us. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Arshleen on the screen. Thank you so much, Kinshuk. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for having me on this live session, Kinshuk. Uh, what all I'm going to share today is uh, derived from the share experience of uh, working with young children and obviously being a mom of a toddler with whom I've been traveling uh, since the time she was three months old. And now she's two and a half. So I'll be very happy if any of my experiences or my tips uh, will help our parents to plan a vacation for their little ones. So happy to be here. Great, Ashley. We are happier to have you here. So Ashley, when I think of traveling with my baby, the first mm -hmm. thing that comes to my mind is the accommodation. So children at this age are super active and it's very difficult to keep them bound within four walls of a room. So I'm sure a lot of our audience also relates with something like this. So when you travel, how do you select accommodation that is suitable for your child as well as um, uh, good enough for adults to stay at? So do you have a checklist or uh, how do you go about it? Uh, I would totally agree that uh, stay options should come first be even before you uh, you know decide or book your tickets because when you're traveling with uh, toddlers and young children, uh, it's important to ensure that their stay is very comfortable because if they are comfortable, you are comfortable. Uh, so uh, when I choose uh, the stay options, the accommodation, my uh, first, the way I go ahead with this that uh, I first put a filter of a child friendly options because itself give you options which are relevant for family and children. And uh, then it purely depends on the purpose of your visit. Say, for example, if uh, we want to go for a weekend getaway, then you might as well book a child-friendly resort and be there for the whole weekend. But if you have a plan of doing a sightseeing, then one should uh, look out for an option which is at a central location and well connected with public transport so that you can go to uh, those places which you really want to visit. At the same time, there are certain things which one should look at. I definitely look at those pointers. Uh, I prefer a family suite or a larger room uh, over a standard room because uh, young children, toddlers, they need ample space to move around. And if you have a child who is still crawling, you know, it's an infant, then you need that space for a child to crawl. Uh, at the same time, it also gives you some space to put the stroller if you're uh, traveling with a stroller or uh, create a small section of a play area within the room itself. So that when the child is inside the room, the child is engaged constructively. Uh, then uh, also look at options like a kid's pool. Uh, ch children love sensory play. And when we talk about summer vacations, uh, water-based activities, they bring in a lot of fun. So uh, always good to check if there is a separate kid's pool, which you, know, you can use for your child uh, and uh, you know, have those fun-based activities with them. Uh, look out for an option wherein you have a kid's outdoor area where, where you, even though they have just two swings, uh, this will really help because uh, children, you can't just keep them indoors. Uh, they need to channelize their energies. Uh, and if uh, there is no option to channelize their energies, they'll become fussy and cranky. So it's always good to take them for an outdoor walk. Uh, they can just use the swings, then channelize the energies, have fun with you. Even if uh, it's not there in the hotel, uh, you may want to look at a place which is near to a public park or something like that. Uh, then there are things like which look very basic to us, but uh, very critical. 
like uh, uh, very small thing like a facility of a refrigerator in the room uh, even things small things like even a, 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 a even even a electric kettle you will require these things to boil water for your child to put the food inside the refrigerator because obviously you will be carrying some kind of food which is uh, very specific for your child uh, then uh, when i finally shortlist any place i made it a point to call that hotel before i book that place because it's very important to validate that information which they have furnished on the website and sometimes what happens is when you talk about talk to them about your travel you talk about your apprehensions they are also able to give you customized options some of the uh, hotels do provide cribs and high chairs in the room itself so uh, it always works and the most critical thing which i discuss when i before i book the hotel or a bnb is about the food options whether the chef will be willing to customize and create meals in line with my child's requirements in my experience there are places where in the chefs do not you know support uh, so it's always better to discuss with them also give them options which your child likes at home you know things like you may maybe a khichdi or a curd rice or pancakes whatever the, your child likes to eat you may want to tell them and check with them that will they be willing to uh, adjust their meal options and create or curate meals for your child because if they say yes then i would say 50% of your challenge is solved you know you can even pack the lunch uh, in the morning itself if you're going out so uh, that's one thing and the last and another uh, uh, critical aspect again related to food if your child is very particular about certain options and he really or she really likes homemade uh, food then you may want to uh, pick a bnb option wherein you have an either access to a kitchen or there is a kitchen at available so that it gives you some kind of a flexibility uh, we all say that you know have Uh, a well fed child is a happy child so while you are traveling you need to ensure that your child is well fed and is fed with the things which the child likes and enjoys so i think uh, uh, if the hotel is not providing you the those kind of uh, food options uh, might as well book a bnb wherein you have an access to a kitchen or a kitchen these are the things which i keep in mind So true, Arshina. You mentioned about food. I was just about to ask you because when traveling with toddlers, uh, you have to be open for surprises. What they ask for when? So, uh, uh, like when it comes to food, what kind of food do you carry? Or rather, not only food. So, with toddlers, you have to carry extra clothes, uh, extra food, toys, cleaning supplies, for and you have to be ready for it all. so the list is endless and uh, i end up overpacking so uh, one important thing is food of course but then how do you manage packing all of it together and still uh, be able to travel you so with uh, toddlers you can't carry very heavy suitcases and go around you also have to uh, travel light which is mm. a very difficult thing and uh, how do you manage that so uh, kinchu let's just take it one by one because food itself is a larger area to talk about and then we'll move on to packing uh, when it comes to food uh, and if it is a planned visit i would rather say that you uh, start planning a week ahead or 10 days ahead of your travel uh, you may want to if let's start with milk because you know usually toddlers are uh, uh, for them a staple it's milk is a staple diet and if you have already transitioned your child to cow milk then the change of milk at any place can lead to tummy upset issues or fussiness or crankiness uh, so i'm just sharing my practical experience and i mean parents may want to just test it out so what i uh, do or what what i did when i was I, used, I was planning for a longer uh, a vacation. I introduced my daughter to pasteurized cotton milk for at least ten days before my travel, uh, just to observe one how well she is taking that milk, and uh, is she comfortable? Is it you know she, is she able to digest it well? And while traveling, 
I actually carried those packages with me. So there are 100 ml, 150 ml packages are also available along with one liter carton. And if it is a known brand, you would know that this will be available in the city you're traveling to or a country you're traveling to. But it's always good to carry those three or four or five smaller packets uh, with you uh, because you know that this milk, this kind of milk will go well with your child. Then at the same time, I carry a lot of cereals that even if you know there's nothing available, I'll just open this milk cap carton, the small cap carton, in a, and you know put the cereal in the bowl, put the milk, and just you know give it out to my child. Then uh, things like uh, homemade uh, roasted suji. Once you just roast the suji, it becomes kind of an instant food for your child. If your child is uh, okay eating suji ka cake, then this also becomes something which you can carry with you. Then nuts, if the child is comfortable eating, nuts is familiar, is, is, is not allergic to nuts, one should carry nuts with in the baby bag for sure. Um, then uh, things like uh, on the go foods like food like biscuits, uh, though the, these are junk options, but they really come handy when you don't have anything available to feed your child. Uh, or, or, or a cupcake, these are the things you should always have in your baby bag. Uh, apart from the readily available things which you can, uh, you know, make feed your child. Then, uh, apart from that, uh, make your child familiar with the things like a mashed potato, because you know that wherever you go, you will be able to get boiled potatoes, and you can actually, you know, uh, make a mashed potato out of it. A curd rice, if the child is not introduced to curd rice as yet, you can just start introducing the child with curd and rice and it's very easy to make uh, if you're traveling. Um, uh, and uh, uh, also things like milkshakes, uh, fruit shakes, if the child is still not familiar, just start introducing them because these are the things which are readily available options. Uh, pancakes, readily available option, any hotel you'll go, you will find pancakes. Uh, parathas if they are comfortable. So for me, my daughter, uh, I know what, if she'll not eat anything, she'll eat paratha. So I actually carry a ghee, a, a small box of ghee with me always. Wherever I go, I just give that ghee to that person and say, okay, please make a paratha for my child. So uh, this, is, this is the way you can you know, plan your food for your child, but you know best what works for your child, what is the kind of food the child likes. Uh, but just start planning it for uh, uh, like a 10 days ahead of your travel. Uh, start introducing your child to these options if the child is not introduced. See if the child is comfortable eating or not. And uh, then pack it accordingly. Uh, so that was about food. Now let's talk about packing. Again, this is uh, one uh, uh, area which can make anyone anxious. And no matter how how much we try uh, uh, with a toddler or with a little one traveling you end up overpacking i would say uh, a little bit of overpacking is still okay uh, uh, rather you know just realizing that you have left something critical at home and while you're packing as parents we'll have to sacrifice a few things from our end because we need to make space for our little ones because they will occupy their stuff will occupy most of the space in your luggage uh, so uh, when we talk about packing, uh, I think there are two aspects of it. Uh, one is your uh, uh, carry-on baggage, wherein uh, you need to ensure that your baby bag has everything needed for the child. And then when the other one is your, obviously, your uh, check-in luggage. Uh, so uh, when we talk about your uh, carry-on baggage or a baby bag, let's just focus on the baby bag here. Your baby bag should have all the essentials required for a child. Uh, it should have ample number of diapers. Please prefer having full of diapers uh, because they are really helpful and easy. Uh, white, number of wipes, you should have ample number of wipes, wet wipes. You should have uh, a sanitizer. You should have a, 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 a baby sheet. No matter your child is still two and a half or three years, you may require that. Uh, then at the same time, uh, 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 mosquito repellent patches are very important. Di diaper rash cream is important. Miniature uh, lotion cream, baby lotion, sunscreen is very important to be a part of your package. Uh, make a separate pouch for medicines. If you're traveling, uh, you would know what all uh, medicines 
your pediatrician has recommended for your child. Uh, but ensure that you have a medicine for fever, you have a medicine for vomiting, you have a medicine for uh, 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 diarrhea, uh, you, you have a medicine for cough and cold, probiotics. Uh, when you travel uh, it's, it's, uh, with children, you know, you, they, they, their tummies are very sensitive. All these things should always be a part of your uh, smaller pouch in your baby bag that even if when you're going for a sightseeing, this bag is always there. In, in your baby bag. Um, also, uh, uh, vomiting uh, medication, you must check with your pediatrician because uh, in, uh, 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 in my experience working with young children and with my daughter as well, uh, most of this, the, the children in this age group, they get motion sickness. Uh, so while uh, they are on road, they might puke. So it's always good to check with your pediatrician that is there any anti-vomiting medicine which you can give to your child before you travel if you're, it's just a long road journey. Because uh, uh, if the child vomits in the car, it, the child becomes really distressed. And uh, there are certain bands which are available in the market, uh, which are like, uh, which, which, call, which are called kids motion sickness bands. They, uh, you can check with your pediatrician and if the pediatrician allows you or you know recommends you can try that as well uh, then always keep uh, uh, if your child is still on uh, on uh, formula milk then you would obviously would want to carry two sterilized feeder bottle in your uh, baby bag along with change of clothes which is very very important uh, because you really don't know when you may have to change your child's clothes uh, it can happen any anywhere at any point in time. So one has to be always prepared for that. Um, and uh, 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 carry boiled water uh, and sipper, uh, a small spoon, a small bowl for your child along with the food packages. So you may want to create a small package for the food separately and keep it separately in the baby bag so that it's easily accessible when you want to feed your child then there should be a separate section for toys and uh, uh, resources which you're going to use to engage your child uh, so that's how you kind of organize your baby bag and uh, another area which one should focus on uh, while traveling especially if you're traveling international is always keep your documents at your reach you know create a small packet pack for a pack pouch for your passport, visa, and put some uh, relevant currency also in that same pouch uh, for that particular country you're traveling to because uh, everywhere uh, the credit cards may not work. So it's always safe to carry some cash with you and put it at, uh, in, in your bag at, at, in such a, at such a location that if you're, you have, you're carrying your child in one hand, you're able to you know, pull this pouch out from your bag. Uh, because these are the smaller things, but they can actually create a lot of panic. Uh, if your child is cranky and crying and you're just muted, you just need to have to find a passport or a visa and all those things. Um, and uh, do, when you talk about your uh, uh, check-in baggages, uh, like I said, uh, uh, make some space for your child's stuff. Uh, obviously, you will be uh, checking out the weather. Uh, to ensure that you carry weather appropriate clothes but uh, at the same time uh, always carry a light sweatshirt if you you are going to a place where you know you're uh, it's a summer vacation and you know that it's not going to be cold but at the same time it's always recommended to carry a very light blanket and a light sweatshirt uh, for your child because you re really don't know if it rains it might get cold for your child. You may not for, uh, you may not find find it cold for yourself, but the child it will it will it may get cold for your child. Um, then uh, carry most of the easiest way or easy kind of clothes are like all uh, 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 pull up kinds of clothes, uh, making layers, but avoid using things with zippers and buttons, which take a lot of time for you to you know uh, get your child ready. Uh, carry carry more slip-on shoes versus your uh, 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 shoes with laces because uh, uh, those slip-ons are easier to uh, for a child or for a uh, for a toddler to carry. Uh, another one uh, thing which you definitely not miss to pack because I had done it in the past and I actually faced a lot of challenges is if your child is potty trained, 
please ensure to carry that uh, 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 carry that uh, toilet seat uh, with you seat with you because it's really really important so uh, i think practically these are the things things like umbrella things like sunscreen things like caps if you're going to a beach site uh, all those things should be there in your bag for your child and uh, on a lighter note uh, i think you can for yourself keep just two or three pairs of jeans and multiple tops and you will be sorted <laughs> so to such practical tips uh, arshleen i think um, i know you are a hands on mom and uh, i'm sure now your our audience also will agree with the same um talking about that arshleen when you travel uh, i understand you take long trips uh, whether it is road trips or flight trips so how do you keep your child engaged so while they have to be seated and bound by the seat belt Uh, how do they how do you keep them busy and manage uh, their moods yeah um uh, i'll take a step back here kinshuk uh, with young children uh, uh, they thrive on routines so if you are planning a travel you may start you may want to start giving them a heads up that there is a travel planned for you so that uh, when they travel it doesn't come to them as a surprise uh, trust me uh, children they don't like surprises as much as you and me do and if your child is traveling for the first time uh, in a, in a by a flight uh, or any other mode of uh, 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 commutation uh, just make the child familiar with those words show them some videos on uh, on youtube like for example if, if the child is traveling for uh, uh, by a plane for the first time you may want to get a play a plane toy at home and show the child that this is how a plane looks like we're going to travel show them some videos uh, which talks about which talk about uh, airport and there are very many child friendly child appropriate videos available for our children to look through uh, so start giving them a heads up that there is a travel plan it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to have a lot of fun uh, so uh, creating that positive disposition towards the travel the next step is when you travel and when you're packing your baby bag have a lot of uh, options to engage them constructively uh so uh, children have a very short attention span and uh, if you will just keep one toy or uh, any uh, one activity for a child and if it is a longer flight that may not work so have multiple options like you may keep uh, um, uh, uh, maybe one crayon or couple of crayons with an art book you can keep a, a small sec portion of one play doh there are travel kits available for play dohs as well you can keep one as uh, a play go a play doh you can keep some of the small uh, pocket size board book story book uh, you can keep uh, a travel uh, friendly a travel friendly uh, pretend play kits like you know a doctor kit or a kitchen party kit and there could be so many whatever your child likes then you can keep small figurines for your child to engage and don't forget to keep the favorite toy i mean I'm, i every child has one or the other favorite so if your child has something which child really likes maybe it could be a pillow it could be a blanket it could be a soft toy a soft toy please keep that in the baby bag for your child and when you are in the flight or when you are on road with the child do not take out everything in one go the key here is uh, take out every activity one after another so uh, let them just enjoy one activity for some time after half an hour 15 minutes depending upon the interest of the child then introduce them to another activity and another activity and have keep having conversations keep you know keep keep them engaged throughout uh, while they are playing with these toys uh, at the same time make a combination of new and old uh, old toys and activities because uh, anything which will be new for them will catch their curiosity more and probability of they getting interested and engaged in that new toy or new activity will be much higher versus the old ones so have a combination of something new which is like a surprise like hey you know mama got this for you or papa got this for you uh, along with the the toys or things which they are already doing at home uh, uh, with this age group sticker books like uh, uh, they really work 
well so you can carry a lot of stickers or sticker books with you as well and um, if the journey is long uh, please you know just take a walk with your child because they may get stressed they may get tired sitting at one place so it's okay to just hold their hand take them for a stroll within the uh, flight itself uh, if you are on road just take breaks in between so that you know they are able to walk for a bit um and uh, carry a lot of snacks uh, uh so children get very excited when there is something which is wrapped very nicely so if, since you will be traveling from home it's a good idea to have uh, smaller smaller food packets which are uh, packed nicely colorful they may not eat everything but uh, it will it will help you in engaging them and uh, feel free to give them a candy when they are bored and when they land because that's the time the anxiety is very high so once the candy whatever candy or chocolates they enjoy which which will you know divert their attention from uh, boarding and landing plus it will also ease out their anxiety because if they have something in their mouth they are sucking they are eating something it will help in easing out their anxiety so yeah that's how i engage my daughter <laughs> uh that's interesting i think uh, the point about uh, packing small um, keeping small food packets uh, whether they eat or not that does uh, work for engaging them well so i would and um, add another point here kinship uh, when we travel uh, you know the easiest way is you know just give a tap to a child but that does not uh, that screen time does not bring in that kind of a bond which you should develop during this travel see the idea of traveling with your toddler or little one is to have that quality time with them so uh, with all these activities or there will be things which your child would uh, uh, you know would love to do at home like maybe something as simple or easy like a peekaboo uh, in a, in a flight uh, do all these activities with your children refrain from screen because the moment you show them a screen they will not be interested in doing anything else and that's not what we want as parents we want to have that quality time with them develop that trust develop that bond because uh, all of us are working we don't get this much of time to spend with our children so uh, my recommendation to uh, our parent community here is to avoid using the screen while you are traveling try to utilize this time Uh, to have conversations with your children, play with your children, and just don't be worried about other people who are with you, right? Uh, let and uh, let let's not worry about who is watching what. Just be. Let's just focus on our children and ourselves. Is you know what what is more important? I would say. Got it, Ashley. Um, uh one quick question uh, summers are here and we are talking about vacations but honestly the vacations last longer they are like two months but uh, the holidays don't yeah so we go out uh, maybe for a week a 10 day or maybe a 15 day vacation but not for two months of course so uh, do you have any suggestions to how to keep these little ones busy during the holidays when we are not traveling what do parents do then i i can totally get the pain here can you <laughs> we, we all go through this because we all are working we are committed to work and children are at home uh, and and actually it, it can give us a lot of anxiety how do we engage children because uh, you know the schools are off uh, so the uh, best way uh, is to engage them the best way to engage them is to enroll them to activities which they enjoy it can be any activity like a music or a drama or uh, arts and craft whatever the child wants to explore depending upon the age of the child and uh, um it's it's it, and enroll your child there, there are summer camps which are going on uh, i have enrolled my daughter to play summer camp uh, which is for 5 weeks starting from 17th of april and i'm very much sorted because i know that for the next uh, five weeks while i am at work she will be engaged constructively because uh, uh, what we have curated the summer camp with and the activities we have curated for children are age appropriate very engaging there are 
partner activities which are going to happen every week so it's like a combination of multiple skills which my child is going to get exposed to uh, in terms of learning as well as fun so i'm very excited about that summer camp and i would urge uh, our parents as well to uh, you know check our website and reach out to our center directors if they want to know more about this summer camp because that can be one of the options to engage your children uh, constructively during the summer vacation got it i think uh, summer camps are uh, really a good idea because engaging the children is one thing but uh, aging uh, engaging them in a constructive manner in an with an age appropriate activity mm. is very important uh, for the stimulation of the child it's a learning experience for them and uh, in today's time when uh, most of us live in nuclear families this will be a good opportunity for children to socialize with new um, peers and uh, they will uh, learn to manage themselves also with uh, different kinds of activities so i think and also these summer camps uh, uh, can should also become a, a starting point or a stepping stone for their main schools as well there are a lot of children who might be going to main schools so when they interact with new children they are developing like you right rightly mentioned they are they are going to develop their social and emotional <coughs> skills i am getting exposed to children or strangers i would say that the 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 the, uh, the peer level whom they have not met earlier so it becomes like a transitioning period for them to enter to the main schools as well so i think uh, uh, the camps are a very constructive way to engage children and apart from uh, acquiring new skills they are making new friends and that's what we want them to do during uh, their summer vacations and uh, not want them to be on screen for sure yeah and also um, uh, often these summer camps are perceived as a um, as an uh, opportunity where children are just playing but it's i feel it's just not just play it's a learning experience and it's uh, uh, of course uh, we have been through a stage uh, a stage where uh, you know our parents struggled with getting us back to the learning uh, part when we went back to school after vacations so uh, this will also keep the children in routine which is very important for them Absolutely. when they move back to school so uh, learning and the routine uh, both will be in place through the vacations as well and then parents can have their stress free uh, time at work and focus on their work as well yeah totally agree teacher uh i would like to take up questions from our audience now arshleen we have quite a few questions sure. but uh, the first one here is about um, uh, keeping the safety of children in mm -hmm. mind so this is uh, covid times covid has still not ended and uh, there are, there is uh, flu which is uh, very common today so how do parents uh, plan uh, on that part the Uh, health of the children uh, mm -hmm. medication or first aid or how do they manage that while traveling so uh, kinjo i mean obviously we need to continue following the covid protocols while we are traveling uh, wearing a mask is a mask if your child is above 2 years of age then ensuring that the child also wears a mask is important hand sanitization hand wash activities should uh, we need to continue doing these things these are the good things which we have learned during covid times and like you rightly mentioned covid covid has not uh, gone as yet um, and and uh, apart from uh, covid protocols uh, i would say uh, 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 ensure that your child is well dressed well covered if you know even if you feel that there is a little cold uh, uh, in the environment if the environment is a little cold ensure that the child is uh, well covered ensure that the ac uh, uh, in the room is well maintained as per the child's biological or body body requirements usually we say that for a, a toddler uh, it should not be more it should be around 25 to 26 for that matter um, uh, and uh, at at the same time uh, one is temperature control one is uh, your uh, sanitization and hygiene aspects if you are offering food raw fruits or raw vegetables to your child ensure that you wash them with the boiled water so always carry that water bottle in your baby bag 
uh, to uh, wash it before you give it to the child to eat. Then uh, I'll also like to talk about uh, uh, one safety aspect is when we travel, uh, never leave your child unattended. There will be times when you may have to rush to a washroom. Please take your child along with you. Don't leave the child unattended if you are traveling yourself and you're not traveling with anyone. Uh, and uh, uh, always be around if they are doing a water sport, if, you are, you, if you are, they, they are uh, exploring a swing which they haven't explored in the past. Always be around. And uh, uh, be prepared that accidents do often happen. I mean, children bump into uh, walls. They bump into uh, each other if you know there are children around. They may end up getting hurt, but don't panic. I mean, patience is the key here. Always have your first aid, uh, first aid kit ready in your baby bag to give that kind of a first aid to the child. And if you're near a restaurant or a place where you can get an access to an ice pack, you know, just ensure that you give an ice pack to your child at that point in time. Um, another thing is uh, pertaining to food. When it when when it comes to health and safety, I'd like to talk about the food aspect as well. Uh, when we travel uh, as adults, we'd like to explore multiple cuisines because you know food is an important uh, uh, or inviting as aspect of any vacation, and we'd like our children also to get get exposed to multiple cuisines. But I'd recommend that uh, be very mindful of introducing your children to uh, food elements which they haven't tasted earlier or they're not familiar with it. Because with this age group, uh, uh, you, you will discover allergies over a period of time. So you may not know what allergy the child may come up with with any food element if you're intro introducing it for the first time. So it's always safe to try out things which are made with the food elements that the child is familiar with uh, versus something which is like very new for the child. And uh, uh, always uh, carry boiled water with you for your child because water is one, uh, 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 one aspect you need to be very careful when it comes to the health of the child. Um, I think these are mainly the health and safety uh, things which are protocols that usually keep in mind. I also you know, look at the uh, choking hazards as well. Say, for example, when the child is having popcorn, I ensure that the child is around with me or a pomegranate or a corn, boiled corn. All these things can lead to choking hazards. They need to be fed under your supervision, uh, not by the child on their own. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and ensure that your medical kit is always with you in your baby bag. That's very, very important. Ashlin, I know you spoke about food earlier, but a question here is how, do, how does a parent manage the uh, nutrition of a child during a vacation? So people are on a long vacation. Uh, mm -hmm. The nutrition aspect they wouldn't want to compromise on. So how do they manage that? So, uh, like I mentioned earlier as well, uh, whatever the child is comfortable at home, like cereals, uh, 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 your uh, dal, rice, lentils, vegetables, uh, fruits, they all have their nutritional values. And these are the foods which are available anywhere. Right? So, you may want to uh, continue with these food elements along with if your child is comfortable with milk along with milk along with fruits along with purees along with fruit salads the normal salads uh, uh, all these things which uh, this can be the, these are the food options easily available uh, at any place and uh, if you're very particular about it then you might as well would want to take a bnb and do some cooking for your child which the child likes uh, all the groceries uh, which you may want to procure for your child will be available uh, around those areas. But uh, uh, carry as many things you feel that you may not get it outside uh, in your carry baggage. Uh, like, like I said, you need to make space for your uh, the belongings of your child and the things the child will need. So anything which you feel nuts, like nuts if the child is comfortable and not allergic to nuts, please carry the nuts with you. Uh, 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 procure fresh fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. 
uh, yogurts, give fruit yogurts to children. They usually love and enjoy having fruit yogurts. And all of these uh, food aspects have their nutritional value. And even if you are uh, going for something which is junk, uh, like uh, maybe you would want to treat your child with a burger, uh, try for an option of a whole wheat burger versus a normal burger. You know, those, that's how you can just look at nutritional value uh, when it comes to child nutrition. Get it, Ashley. So, Ashley, this is an age for toddlers. They are still learning uh, to regulate their emotions. Mm -hmm. And a parent here asks that um, um, the child has uh, sudden outbursts. So the child might get upset about a drawing that is not perfect according to him or her. And uh, uh, they might get anxious uh, during travel. They might feel homesick. So uh, how, do, how do we manage their anxiety and their emotions during travel? Okay. Uh I think we all as parents go through this um, uh, at some point in time in our lives, Kinshu, when we are anxious that, you know, what if, if my child goes through a meltdown <laughs> when I'm traveling? Yeah. Uh, so uh, again, I'll take a step back here and I would like to reiterate on the point that routines are very important for children. And at the moment, there is a tweak in their routine of, uh, or their routine changes. They get distressed and also at the same time for this age group especially toddlers their entire world is their inner circle they feel safe in their inner circle so when uh, and their inner circle would mean their trusted adults in the family their parents their caregivers or their teachers or caregivers in their schools uh, or anyone whom they are familiar with and you know meet on a day-to-day -day basis so when we travel, we are doing two things which are not in line with the regular life. One, we are changing the routine. And second, we are exposing them to an environment where they're going to get exposed to a lot of new things, new environments, and new people who are practically strangers to them. So when we travel, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier as well, uh, start building the context and preparing your child that there is going to be a change in routine uh, so that the child is prepared and the possibility of being getting cranky with uh, new routine is lesser um, and then the child is more positive towards the change and as and when you're traveling uh, there will be times wherein your child will cling to you it will be the times they will cry and they just would not want to leave your side because obviously that's not their inner world and let's just try to see from a child's perspective they wanted to be with someone whom they can trust and we are expecting them to explore the world because we uh, have you know planned this vacation for them so that they can get experience and they can expo they can get an exposure exposure to new experiences but this will have a transition period it might not happen that, you know, just from a home environment to all of a sudden you're going to an airport or going to a resort and the child will be very comfortable. They will take their own pace to get settled to that environment. You may have to support them. You may have to be around them. And any such instance of a meltdown or crying and, you know, getting frustrated, the best way is to distract them take them or remove them from that environment and divert their attention to a different environment. So that is the reason we uh, recommend that you should carry a lot of different kinds of toys and activities that, you know, any point in time, if you're not, uh, if your child is frustrated, anxious, you are able to uh, pivot their attention towards a, towards a learning game or a fun game or an activity. Even if it involves you to dance with your child, Please go ahead and do that. You know, don't be worried about people watching you. Trust me, it doesn't matter. What matters is you and your child and the experience and memories you're going to create with them. So yes, uh, these instances will happen, and it uh, it is something which you may not you may not be able to avoid. But be prepared mentally. Don't lose your patience at the same time because patience is very important. If the moment you you lose your cool that gets percolated to your child. 
just hold the child nicely in your arms if the child is crying give them that comfort give them water give them something which they like to eat at that point in time uh, engage them with something new something exciting uh and uh, trust me this these are the uh, uh, these these situations they do not last for long but uh, uh, your child will feel better if you are around and if you are maintaining your patience and uh, i would say calm i'm sorry kinchuk i can't hear you i think you are on mute yeah ashlin i think that would be all that we can take from the audience questions one last question before we close um, mm -hmm. we've talking uh, we've spoken enough about uh, the vacation and travel and everything mm -hmm. but uh, there is something that i want to know from you what happens after the vacation so once we <laughs> come back the child is tired maybe if we have had a long flight the child is jet lagged and in a bad mood there uh so how do you deal with that getting them back to the routine after yeah. something uh, a long uh, break of fun and uh, just musty yes absolutely i mean they miss that musty time when they come back home and the most uh, the first and the foremost thing they would say is that they don't want to go back to any other place you know they just want to have fun uh so uh, the idea here is kinchu uh, let's just, uh, first talk about the jet lag if there's a long flight and you've been traveling to a different time zone the moment you enter uh, the uh, the the uh, i would say the homeland or the time zone you are let's say india uh, uh, you, you live in uh, that you may want to follow that time zone uh, with immediate effect See what happens is when you land, you would uh, say, for example, you land at a daytime. Your first uh, instinct would be go back home. Let's take a shower, eat something, and sleep. Don't do that. Try to stretch yourself till night so that you are able to uh, manage your biological clock with the current time zone. You know, so that you are able to sleep during the night time. Because if you sleep during the daytime, you will never be able to adjust the biological clock. and uh, so that's one thing one should look at when it comes to jet lag specifically keep your child hydrated uh, offer them healthy protein based food because uh, you know it helps in uh, and managing the metabolism at that point in time and uh, then uh, don't push your child to follow the routine immediately they will take their time to come back to that routine gradually Uh, uh transition them to their prior routine for example if the child has been going to a child care center for the whole day uh don't let, uh, make them go for the whole day just coming back from a vacation you may want to stagger that for uh, hours couple of hours you know just send them for 2 3 hours on day 1 bring them back home spend some time with them uh keep uh, engage them in multiple activities and uh, slowly and gradually get them to their uh, past routine also have this conversation with the child care team to, with their facilitator with their caregivers uh, so that uh, they also know that the routine has been changed and the child will take some time to settle in and they are also prepared to settle the child they are also prepared to they are also there to support you in settling so usually uh, you know children get settled in a week's time uh encourage to discuss their stories of travel also you know let their facilitators or caregivers know that where you had travel so that they can also have those positive conversations with children when they are back to uh, their normal routine and uh, yes i think in a week's time usually children get back to it yeah and children yeah, love to share love the stories share. about their travel and also sometimes uh, you know yeah. show off their revocations to their friends Absolutely, Absolutely. a good idea. <clears throat> Great, Ashleen. I think th this has been a session inspiring enough for our audience to pack their bags and head out for a vacation. <laughs> Weekend is also here, so thank you so much for uh, give, uh, sparing this time for us and uh, coming over for this session. I think um, I had a lot of fun through it. I'm sure the audience also did. 
So thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much, Kinship, for having me here. It was, uh, uh, I would say, it was uh, more of a fun to have have this conversation, and I could relive my memories of traveling with my child. Even now, I am also geared up to plan a travel. So yeah, sure. thank you. It was it was nice to be here. Great. Thanks to the audience for taking out time today. Uh, have a great day ahead. Have a great weekend. We'll catch up with you on our next live.